Hey guys, John here with another Gamer Multi-Class video, and today I'm going to show you how I made this. Alright, this is a 3D printed Ruin model by Devin Jones, and he has a lot of uh, different pieces up on Thingiverse, and he also has a Patreon page, and I'll put some links in the description. Uh, I modified it a little bit. I took off the base that originally comes with it, and added uh, one a simple base that I designed. And um, that's really the only modification. Oh, I also uh, increased the size to 145% because uh, I think that'll, that scale will look better with what I want to use it for. And uh, it's a pretty straightforward piece. So the top of the archway here, so there's actually a couple of different varieties, uh, styles of columns and uh, the top archway piece. So these are the two that I went with. And you can mix and match them easily because they're, they're all shaped and sized the same, just uh, the, some of the details are slightly different. Uh, this prints up as a separate piece, which uh, that's, a, that's a smart design because, um, you know, if you printed it like this, you'd have to either print it with supports or you'd have a lot of uh, drizzles on the bottom. It just wouldn't come out right. So much easier to print it separately, uh, upside down, and then glue it on afterwards. All right, guys, I've cleaned up the model and I've glued down the top of the arch. So the next step is putting on the sand. And this is very simple and straightforward. So just take some white glue, apply it at full strength, or you can even thin it down a little bit in the bottle. That'll make it easier to spread. So, because um, what I'm gonna do now is just get a little water on my brush and I'm gonna spread it around. Yeah, this is really easy. The only parts that you have to watch out for are when you get close to the actual uh, the terrain piece, I mean the bricks or, or the wall or the columns. So just it's good to use a smaller brush for that for these parts. I could have used a bigger brush, actually I should have, that would have made doing this a little bit faster. So use a big brush for like the, the wide open areas, but then use a small brush when you need to get in close. Okay, I'm going to start applying the sand now, and as you can see, I've put glue on about half of the model, and it's a good idea, like when you're putting glue on a larger model, or even one this size, I mean this isn't terribly big, but when you have a large area to cover with sand, it's usually better to work in phases. So I'm using two grades of sand to get a nicer effect, more texture. So I'm starting with the coarse sand, just going to drop it on, I don't want to put a whole lot. So I'm keeping it fairly light. Now I'm going to empty this out and get my fine sand. Okay, and this is even easier than the coarse sand because now instead of kind of being selective about where I put it, I'm just going to put it over the entire model everywhere that I've glued. And when you do this, if you can, I didn't do it very well, but if you can leave kind of an edge of glue that, that doesn't have sand on it. That'll make it a little easier when you have to go back and apply the glue on the rest of the model. So that's the basic idea. And now I'm just going to finish up the rest of it, let it dry, and then we can go on to the next step. So I finished applying the sand, and once the sand was dry, I went ahead, uh, did a base coat of black paint on the sand, and then I airbrushed uh, gray onto the ruins. I wasn't really precise with the airbrush, so I mean, there's some of the gray that got onto the black part of the sand. But that's fine because um, it's going to be covered up with flock and um, other foliage and base covering later on. I'm going to dry brush it now with some burnt umber. So this is folk art burnt umber. I'm just doing the base, not the ruin. And then when I get close to the ruins, I'm just going to back off because, um, again, I'll put the foliage and other things there, so uh, even, even though there's the gray that's still showing on the sand, that'll be covered up with the basic materials. So I'm just going to go ahead 
and do the entire base like this. And I'll be right back. Alright guys, finished dry brushing the base. Now the next step is some more dry brushing. Oh, before I get to that, so I did go back and um, I used a smaller brush to get into, or get closer to the base of the ruins, but um, I still didn't go, go like all the way up to the bricks because, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be covered up with the flock. Next step, dry brushing the ruin itself. And for this, I'm going to be using Rainy Day Gray by Anita's. So you can actually go like all out with this sort of thing. You can apply different washes of like like browns and even some like greens to because if this you know this is an ancient ruin so there would be all sorts of grime and dirt built up in the cracks and on the surface of the, of the ruins. But uh, I'm just trying to keep this fairly simple. So just going straight to the gray dry brush. There's a good amount of contrast here, so I'm seeing results pretty quickly. You can already see the difference if you compare the right side to the left there. Alright, well I'm going to put this down, or I'm going to move the camera so I can finish the rest of this easier. But uh, you get the idea. Alright, I'll be right back. Alright guys, I've finished dry brushing the gray, and that means painting is complete on this model. So the next step is to go on to flocking. And the way we do this, take white glue, full strength, apply it right to the base, and then spread it out using a cheap brush. And I'm going to get a little bit of water just to help it spread a little better. One area where you want to really pay attention and focus on what you're doing is when you get close to the ruin. So just get the glue, you know, work it in real close, right up to the bricks. And then don't worry if you um, if the glue climbs up the sides a little bit. It's not really, it'll look fine once you apply the flock. And then if you really mess up, there's other foliage to add later to cover up the mistakes. So just remember, unless you're cheating, you're not really doing terrain. You're not really making terrain. <laughs> and then got some tight spots back here where it's kind of tricky. So, you can use a smaller brush if you want. I'm just going to work it in, kind of fudge it. Good enough. And this is pretty much like applying the sand. I mean, just, you know, cover the whole thing. And also, I'm going to do this in phases. So, I've done a little bit less than half of the base at this point. But I'm going to start with the flock now. So I've got my tub here. Now I'm using a small tub, but if you have a, a large tub where you can just fit the entire model in, that's easier. But just for purposes of filming, I'm just using my small tub. This is all you do, just sprinkle it on. Get some good thick coverage. And then tap the excess back into the tub. There we go. Lather, rinse, repeat, and I'll be back when the rest of the base is finished. Alright guys, I've finished flocking the base, and as you can see, I've already started applying flock to uh, the ruin. And this is to simulate like moss and other overgrowth that'll climb up the walls. So, the way I like to do this is just apply a small amount of glue right to the brush, and then just dab it on the various places where you want to put um, a flock, where you, where you want moss and stuff to grow. And you won't even really see the glue, like you just want a small amount. So it might not even look like there's any on there, but it's there. You can see that it's glistening a little bit, so you know it's wet. So it'll stick once you apply it. And the key to this, like so many other things when uh, doing terrain, is to just try to be random. Like, try to avoid any sort of patterns. So sometimes go into the cracks, sometimes go onto the, the surface of the brick. And then, same thing as adding the flock to the base. Sprinkle. 
shake off the excess. All right, yeah, it looks pretty good. So, of course, you know, if you want to add more, just go back, put a little, more, a little bit more glue on. And if it happens to be too thick, uh, it's very easy to take off. I mean, just take your brush and or your, your finger and just wipe it off. All right, I'm going to finish this up, and I will be back. Okay, guys, so this is what the terrain looks like so far. The flock is dry, so we're ready for the next step, super turf. So... It comes like this in individual colors, either in a bag or a canister. And I've gone ahead and mixed a couple of grains here. So I normally like to use tacky glue when applying Super Turf, just because it adds a little bit more grip. You can use white glue, but and, and that'll work just fine. But uh, you know, if you have tacky glue, go ahead and use it. And again, this is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to focus on areas where, like cracks and crevices where weeds and other shrubs and plants would tend to grow. And that's Spike just letting us know that he's down here, keeping us company. Like I said, focus on the cracks and like the base of the, the walls and stuff, but put some out in the open as well. Once you get some glue on, careful Spike, don't trip. Just take some Super Turf, apply it, and you can either like shake it on, or you can kind of press it on in individual clumps, kind of like that. And once you're done placing the Super Turf, shake off the excess, tap the bottom. And then it's a good idea too to apply a sealer of uh, watered down white glue. Just sprinkle this over the entire piece and focus on the, the super turf. Well, I'm going to let this dry and I'll see you in the next step. Alright guys, super turf is dry. And the piece at this point looks pretty good, and it would make a great terrain piece for gaming or for display. But I'm going to go ahead and add one final detail that I like to use on my terrain pieces, and also um, when I'm doing bases for miniatures, actually. And these are grass tufts. Now, they come in all different colors, and there's several manufacturers. And uh, they typically come on a sheet like this. These are very easy to use. All you do is get your tweezers. Grab a tuft, put white glue directly on it, place it down, and use your tweezers or your fingers just to gently push it into place. And that's all there is to it. Yeah, these are really easy to use, and they look great. And, and there we are, guys, the finished piece. I hope this video was helpful for you in finishing your own terrain pieces. And keep in mind, you can use the techniques that I showed you here and experiment with them. Like I said earlier, you can use different washes to bring out the colors on the stones, simulating dirt and weathering and whatnot. And you can also use different colors of flocks and even different types of basing materials. Thanks again to Devin Jones for creating this model. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to check out the Gamer Multi-Class blog. Until next time, peace out and happy gaming.